the award-winning therapeutic radiography led oncology podcast. My name is Joe McNamara and I'm joined by my fellow host, Nama Jolka Anderson. Hi everyone. So we're here at UKIO and we have some regular guests uh, who featured on the podcast previously. So if you want to go on and check out Radicational, uh, go and have a look at the link via our profile and essentially you'll be able to find a full, I think it was an hour, maybe an hour and a bit (laughs) worth of of podcast content. Um, So do you both want to introduce yourselves separately? Yeah, my name's Tyler. Um, I've just finished being a student diagnostic radiographer, <laughs> which feels really weird. Um, and I'm starting in September for my actual role, so I'm dead excited for that. Amazing. Um, yeah, my name's Steph, so again, I'm no longer a student at University of Salford, which is really bizarre. Um, we've just both applied for our HCPC registration, so I'll be starting after summer at Wigan as well in my newly qualified role. Amazing. How many interviews did you go for before getting the job? One. Both of you. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I was asked in the interview if I had any other jobs and I told them no and they said that's a very risky strategy. But I said I'm the sort of person that doesn't get a backup plan unless she really needs one. Oh, there you go. It's all right. Manifesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Positivity. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your new jobs as much as you know prior to starting? Uh, so mine's in plain film, x-ray. Uh, so I'll be starting off doing like A&E, GPs, the usual, uh, going to theatres, um, quite interested in going into cross-sectional or interventional in the future, yeah. uh, but I just want to kind of find my ground and establish myself as a professional radiographer, make sure that I'm confident in what I'm doing before going off and using massive doses of radiation. <laughs> <laughs> Start small, work your way up. Yeah, basically. Steph, do you share that? Yeah, I, think, I mean, I was more torn, wasn't I? I think I was very much in the decision of playing film or going straight into cross-sectional um, and I sort of decided in the end to start off with playing film because I couldn't imagine after three years just not taking another x-ray again. Yeah. And where I am at Wigan, they're both two separate entities, the two separate departments essentially. So if you go into CT and MR, you wouldn't necessarily go back out into x-ray and vice versa. So I just want to see sort of how I progress as a radiographer and sort of then find where my interests lie. Yeah. instead that way but a bit different for me because I'm based at Wigan but we have four sites so I travel across Wigan, Wrightington, Lee and Thomas Lineker right. and we've got a new community diagnostic centre being built in Lee at the moment which is set to open I think next year so that'll be interesting to see how the job develops from that as well. And do you rotate round all, all four of those all four. Yeah then. so we have like a set week in each sort of place but it allows us to see like a wide range of patients as well so it's definitely a bit more interesting I think something that's going to keep me is it, harder, is it harder though logistically? I'm just thinking you've got a family. Yeah. Like, I, I'd worry that I'm in the wrong place <laughs> on the wrong week. <laughs> I think because I've been there for three years and as students we get the opportunity to travel around right. for three years as well. So the students that have taken jobs there don't really know any different. Yeah. So for us we just sort of go on with it. And it is my local hospital. I think Lee is the furthest away at half an hour but the rest are on my doorstep. So it's not too bad and it's nice to see sometimes outpatient outpatients you get your A&E things and then we have Wrightington which is like an orthopaedic specialist centre as well so we see a lot of interesting cases there. So thinking about the transition from student to qualified staff member what do you think you're going to miss the most? Getting somebody to check your images I think. (laughs) I always like to have like I like to go off and do them but it's always nice to have someone double check it and you know that you're not missing something and you're not like you've not done it wrong even though you know that you've done yeah. it right it's so you'll nice have a super numerary uh, period yeah you'll, be, you know, you'll have like you know, preceptorship mm. uh, presumably have preceptorship yeah. yeah so we've got different preceptorships haven't we so mine's quite short so mine's a 12 week one mine's a full is. year mine's a 12 month oh, preceptorship right, okay. so is that so because you're across more sites no I think it was a difficult one, so Wigan were sort of almost hemorrhaging staff at the time, so I think they needed to have a look and see what was happening. I think during COVID, obviously, everybody was just qualifying and being thrown yeah. in the deep end, and we've, they've had a look and realised that perceptorship is is needed a bit more to sort of bring people into it, so they're just trying to make it. And it doesn't mean that it's over the whole 12 months. You'll do, I think, similar to Tyler, so you'll get your 12 weeks, and then you'll get a check-in at six months, you'll get a check-in at eight months, and then you get a check-in again at 12 months, and you have, like, a party, like a... Post-perceptorship party, apparently, so that'd be interesting to see where that goes. Can I ask, there are lots in the media at the moment about retention of NHS staff, 
as people just entering a profession that people are leaving, what is going to keep you in a department? I'm just thinking for any managers listening, for any strategic leads, you know, there's lots at UKIO this year about workforce, but what's going to keep you in this profession? I think for me, training opportunities. Um, so there's talks at the moment about having like a rotational post. That's something that I would definitely be interested in doing, kind of having that additional training, being able to do different modalities. Yeah. Um, and I think also sharing best practice as well. So there's quite a lot at my site at the moment where radiographers are speaking about what they're passionate about. Me and Steph are going to be doing a talk about social prescribing because we've managed to peck their heads enough that Amazing. they'll let us in. Um, so I think, yeah, like sharing best practice, best practice and CPD for me. I think for me, sort of being a mum of two young children, it's that work-life balance. Yeah. So it's good, sort of like, you want to feel valued and work as well, so you want to feel like you're making a difference. And I get it's such high pressure, and sometimes people haven't got the time to be like, do you know what, you're doing a good job. But yeah. sometimes I think people need to hear that and feel like they're appreciated, but then also be able to switch off and sort of know at the end of the day that you can go home and just not have to take any of that stress with you which is hard because some days are better than others some days you seem to have a multitude of staff and some days there might be two of you and you don't stop all day yeah and I think it's just remembering the good days and I said to some of our students in second year we did a lecture with them a few weeks back and second year is really hard I think it's probably the hardest out of three years particularly at Salford as yeah. well um, and I just said remember that you apply for this degree for a reason. I said, remember your why? I said, sometimes yeah. it's really hard. I said, I never thought I'd be that student in second year that considered dropping out in second year because it was that difficult and I just couldn't find that balance yeah. between sort of looking after my children and sort of having me time as well. And I did consider dropping out, but then I also remembered why I'd started it. I remembered that it was only another 12 months and it is difficult, but I think you do need to sort of keep that focus in mind as well and know that it, there are better days ahead yeah. of all. It's like any job, isn't it, really? You're going to have bad, you're going to have good, so, yeah. So now that you're qualifying, if you could go back to your pre-uni self, what advice would you give that person? Oh, believe in myself more. Be more confident. Definitely be more confident. That's been my biggest problem throughout the whole three yeah. years. Not so much this year, but towards the end of second year, I started believing in myself a lot more, and that's reflected on my exam results and my assessments, my oral presentations, I've become away with 80-85% which is unheard of for me, particularly with a nurse, but definitely just believe in yourself and I'm my own biggest enemy and I think if I could tell first year staff that, do you know what, it's going to be okay and you're going to come away and be doing things like this, yeah. because I would Got never have even chili, thought about it, it's her, yeah. Yeah. she is my biggest cheerleader to be honest and she's definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone for a lot of things and obviously I can only thank her for that because I don't know whether I would be this person today. How do you get her back? Oh, I don't know, I'll find some way, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till we're qualified. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe at your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Um, I think confidence, but I think for me more from a clinical side, because I'm quite confident with like my essay writing and things like that, I don't mind speaking to people, but I think clinically I'm always worried. Like is it going to be wrong, is it kind of, yeah. and I, he I held myself back a little bit from throwing myself in, so I was like, well I don't want to irradiate someone and then it's not right and I've got to repeat it, so I think being a bit of a perfectionist, every time in first year I wanted it to be gold standard every time and Rage Off has told me that's not realistic, especially when the patient's been in a lot of pain and the mm -hmm. conditions that they come in, and I think once I got that into my head, I was able to relax a bit more and then my confidence grew, I was able to do it naturally yeah. when I wasn't worried about making sure it was gold standard, the image was then gold standard, so I think that really. I think from a, speaking as a lecturer as well, I think that will come with experience yes. and actually I think it's safer to maybe be like that sometimes, yeah. I think yeah. anyone who qualifies and is maybe overconfident in the yeah. clinical setting Sometimes that can that can hinder your progression yeah. Yeah. because you're overconfident to deliver radiation when actually being a bit more tentative and thinking through things can really help you um, progress. So obviously you run social media for educational. What is on the agenda now that you're qualifying? I think we've let it slip a bit. 
um, which I think I think that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Given, given final year assessment. We've, we've kind of had to sort of take a step back from it all, and I think we've had we had a bit of a sit down chat, haven't we, um, last night and sort of over the last week, just how we're going to bring it back again because a lot of students sort of speaking to them at university, and then other people will just recognise you from social media, which is very bizarre yeah. because we don't see ourselves as anything special. But it's nice to sort of be recognised that way as well. So we definitely need to pick it up again. Um, focus on some more third year stuff because a yeah. lot of our things were like first and second year and how we sort of approach those assessments tips to survive that whereas third year I think is a big one as well yeah. and because a lot of people do let the social media slip there's not a lot out there to be like do you know what if you start thinking about your dissertation use these tips this is, this is how hard third year is going to be or what's going to be expected and but this is essentially the end goal we did do an um, interview tips one didn't yeah. we recently which we sort of both felt a bit fraudulent for doing before we actually got jobs. We did hold off. <laughs> we, we waited did actually, off. didn't we, until sure. I got my job and yeah. then it's like, I'm not going to jinx it. But well, that's been really well received as well. There's yeah. a lot of students, I think that's one of their biggest worries going yeah. into third year. Not just the academic side, but, but I don't know what they're going to ask me at interview. And to be honest, mine was really relaxed. I, I don't know if it's probably because it was my place yeah. in sight, but I just felt like it was a normal conversation. Yeah. So I think we definitely need to keep up with the tips and everything again. Yeah. And, Keep pushing the social prescribing as yeah, always. Yeah, amazing. And I think we can do a bit more of a radio because we focus on to actually got our degree yeah. because we don't want to be unqualified people putting out information about radiography. We want to make sure that we've actually got that degree and make sure that we know what we're talking about, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you for coming on. If, uh, I think it's episode number 87 was yours I did check it I didn't remember it. <laughs> usually I can remember them but make sure you check their full episode out and obviously they're here at UK until Wednesday yes yeah so you'll be out and about taking photos of people <laughs> thank you Bye. thank you thank you